I'm going to, to present a few practical examples with anomaly detection examples with big ML. And uh, this is the outline. So first I'm going to do a little recap, although with that after Professor Storm presentation it might not be needed, but just really quick and graphical. Uh, and then uh, the first example will be about removing outliers or data cleaning. The second example will be about fraud detection. And the third example will be about uh, model degradation or uh, novel categories discovery. And let's go for the recap. So as uh, this slide was presented this morning, um, anomaly detection is an unsupervised algorithm that uh, looks for unusual instances in the data. And, uh, and in, it's uh, made to provide an anomaly score to each instance. And the highest is the score. The most unusual is the instance. If we look at this data set with uh, bank transactions, we could see that the red one uh, could be uh, defined as an anomaly as it's very different from the rest. So it has a very high amount and it's the only transaction with this zip and this class. And uh, if to have a graphical example, we have, if, we, if we had these objects, which object could we pick uh, as, the more, as the most unusual in this group? So a possible solution, if we looked at the shape, at shape uh, features, would be that one. So we could pick the key as the most unusual because it, it's it's uh, it's uh, skinny, but but not as skinny as the as uh, the the other two. It has corners. It doesn't have corners, and it's it's not round. So it's really different from all, and it, it could be an example of an anomaly, really, to be a graphical example. We've um, Tom has spoken about um, isolation forests, and uh, the idea is growing random decision trees and uh, to to separate each instance. And, and then seeing uh, at what level the instance was isolated. So here, uh, if the instance is, able, is, is isolated on top, it's easy to isolate with a few splits. And uh, depending on the depth, then, so if the, if the instance is, is, is hard to isolate, it will be deeper in the, in the tree. And then based on the depth where the, where the instance has have been is isolated, there will be a, a, an anomaly score assigned. And the highest is the anomaly score, the most anomalous is, is the instance. Another graphical interpretation is like this. As you know, decision trees make splits perpendicular to the, to the axis. So in the left, we have a, 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 all the splits needed to separate or to isolate a, a, a usual data point. And we can see that there are a lot of black lines. Every line is a split. And, uh, and on, the, on the right, uh, we can see that an anomaly needs much fewer splits. So it will be uh, higher in the tree. Okay, let's go for the for the first demo. What are outliers? Here is a is a joke about it. And uh, uh, well, in in general, outliers are data points that that differ significantly from other observations. And in general, in statistic analysis, uh, they can cause serious problems. So it's a, it's a classical uh, problem to to clean and, and remove outliers. We can have examples if we had a, a regression problem. So here we could, we could be predicting uh, flat. Uh, prices based on square meters and we could have this generic data flow and then four points on top that really more expensive than the rest those could be considered as outliers as they our model would be basically would be here and it, they could be deferring somehow our, our, our model the same with classification if we had uh, for example uh, predicting if a, if a flat is sold or not based on the price and the, and, and the square meters uh, blue is sold Red is unsold, so and we can see that there are outliers again. So there are uh, pl uh, plots that are sold by, with a high, higher price, and also plots that are not sold with a with a low price. You know? So in in the end, uh, um, the idea of, of removing outliers is removing those data points, so so we can uh, uh, let our model generalize better. Uh, for that, the workflow uh, or the, the pipeline that I'm going that I'm going to to present is, is as follows. So the original data set first is split into a training and test data set. Uh, the test data set will be used to, to, to evaluate. So first from the train data set, we create a model with all the data without cleaning. And then uh, we can evaluate uh, all, the, all that model with the test data set. And then again, and then we create an anomaly detector to remove outliers from the training data set. And we, we filter out the, the most anomalous uh, um, instances, and we get a clean data set. And based on that clean data set, we can create a clean model to classify and, and, and then uh, evaluate again. And then we will be able to, to compare evaluations and see if, in our case, 
this uh, method, uh, this uh, clean data cleaning makes sense. So in general, anomaly detectors can be used to remove outliers. And, and this methodology that I'm going to present is, is useful to, to test in, in every case. The data set that I'm going to use is somehow famous. It's the, the diabetes data set. Uh, it, it already comes in BigML when you create a, a, an account. And um, every, every in a row of this data set represents a patient. And um, the idea is, uh, the, our objective is predicting if the patient is, is diabetic or not. So the, the objective field is the one on the, at the end, so true, diabetic, and true or false. And, and then we have eight attributes, um, like uh, plasma glucose, insulin level, uh, diabetes pedigree, which means if, if there were diabetic cases in the family, etc. So we're going to see how it works in the in BMF. So I well I I already uploaded the, the data set. Um, this is uh, already I created a data set already. Uh, actually I'm in the source space here. I need that one. Okay so here we can see the data set there are 768 instances and um, it's uh, well the 500 patients each instance is a patient so 500 patients are not diabetic and 268 patients are diabetic. First thing I will do is split the data. Uh, here is the menu. I'll use a seed so, so this can be repeated uh, every time. So that the, I'll, I'll do an 80 20 random split with a seed so you can repeat exactly the same exercise. And um, when I click on the button, we get the 80% the uh, training data set. And from here, I can um, configure a model. I'm going to use a decision tree, a very simple one. I will tell uh, um, to use only 30 nodes, so a very small tree for the sake of simplicity. And let's create that decision tree to predict uh, diabetes that was already set by default as the, the objective field. Here's how the tree looks. We can inspect the, the interface and see if the rules make sense. Uh, you probably have seen the interface so well. We could see here the importance of the different fields. And uh, well, the idea now is evaluating, so let's Let's go and evaluate this model over the data set I, I, I saved initially, so the 20% test data, and see how it looks. Uh, this is the, the, the classification evaluation. Um, in my case, I want to predict the diabetic patient, so my positive class is true. And then I have those metrics here uh, that, that I will be able to compare later to, to, my, to my other test. I'm going to open another tab. Okay, now again in my training data set, so 80% training data set, 614 instances, I'm going to create an anomaly detector based on that. And I'm going to use the, the, the default parameter. So one click and I create an anomaly detector. Now it's, it's using the whole 614 instances with all the, the attributes to generate uh, random, so um, decision trees in an isolation forest. And, uh, and based on that, the, the results and the, the, the anomalies interface will appear. So here we have the anomalies interface um, on the left. But we can see by default, we have, there are top 10, the top 10 anomalies. So every, every, thing, every bit on the left we see here is an instance, a patient, represents a patient. The, the one on top is the, the most anomalous patient with the, with the highest anomaly score in my data set. In this case, it's a, it's a 62%. And, and, and when I move the mouse over those instances on the right, I can see that the data details about each instance appear. So here I have the 10 most anomalous patients in my data set. And uh, for, for each patient, I can inspect it by putting the mouse on top of it. Here I can see the score and I can also see um, what are the fields with more importance to, to, to determine that specific instance as an anomaly. And, uh, and if I go to the right, I can see that the uh, fields are ordered by importance. So the, the most important diabetes pedigree uh, appears as first. And I can see a distribution histogram of all data, all the data set, and uh, the value of my current top anomaly. So here, my top anomaly has a diabetes pedigree of 2,329. And I can see that in, in the total data histogram, it appears really on top. So it's really on top of the, of the, of the data in that sense. Again, in, in insulin, my top anomaly also is on top, like it has seven, 744. And in, in terms of plasma glucose, it's also uh, very, very high um, in, compared to the data set. To the data set. And surprisingly, uh, the patient is not 
diabetic. In, in, I'm not an expert, but uh, with high insulin and plasma glucose, and even uh, with a, big, a high diabetes degree, um, at, at those levels, uh, it's surprising that this patient is, is not diabetic, and, and it could be either an exception, a uh, very special case, or, or maybe a, a bad diagnose. We don't know, but in any case, uh, this specific instance won't help to, uh, my model to generalize, so I'd rather uh, remove it. And then, then I could inspect other instances and see if, if they if they represent uh, harm or not. But I'm just going to I'm just going to select them all, the top ten instances, and uh, clicking here, uh, and then creating a data set. I'm going to create a data set, uh, removing all those ten anomalies, the ten top anomalies. Here I have an a data set instead of 614, I have 604 um, patients, and now I'm going to create a model again and evaluate it. To, to see uh, if it works better. I need to create exactly the same model to compare apples with apples. And uh, so 30 nodes, a small tree. Here we go, here it is. And then I can evaluate with the same data set, obviously. And there's another evaluation. So here, uh, with my positive class as true, we can see that the, the accuracy here is 79.2. We were at 73.4 before cleaning. And we have an F measure of 0 0.64 and, and a P coefficient of 0 0.50. Also, the F measure is lower and the P coefficient as well. And uh, um, there's a screen to compare evaluation, so we can, we can use that. We, can, we could compare both evaluations in, in this screen. And here what we have is the row curve displayed with the positive class as true. We can see that the, 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 the blue one is the clean one, and the, the orange one is the, is the default one. And uh, we can see here the metrics for both, so the, 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 all those metrics without explaining what they are, but um, all those metrics are higher for my, for my blue model, so for the clean model. So in this case, the, removing the ten, top 10 anomalies uh, was, was helpful. So yeah, we saw with, with that workflow, uh, we were able to, to improve the classifier performance um, by removing um, 10 anomalies. And, um, and in, in general, um, by experience, we, can, we, we often say that uh, removing anomaly, anomalies with a score over 60% uh, works to, to help classifiers work better. Let's go to the next case uh, about drug detection. In this case, uh, the idea is to use machine learning to detect fraudulent financial transactions in a, in a credit card transactions data set. Um, fraud transactions in general are, are very unusual. So we, we, we talked about fraud this, this morning a lot. Um, and, and, and we said that um, data sets are very unbalanced. Mm -hmm. and, and that's why uh, supervised learning doesn't work and, and, and we need to, to use anomaly detectors. This is the... the the workflow that we would use. So we, we would have a, a historic data set with non-fraudulent transactions and, and then create an anomaly detector. And, and then new transactions would be tested over the anomaly detector. So they would get an anomaly score and, 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 we, and, and high scores would be uh, considered suspicious transactions and analysts could have uh, 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 to, to review those suspicious transactions. Professor Tom uh, uh, went further even with, uh, with another interaction that, that looked very promising. Uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll stay uh, here. The, the data set um, we are going to use is the credit cards data set from, from Kaggle. It's, it's also uh, quite famous. Um, it's uh, it's about, about credit card transactions that are anonymized and, and it's very unbalanced. So every row that we have is represents a, a credit card transaction and we have like a time, uh, an amount and a, and a class, fraudulent or non-fraudulent. This is somehow the objective field. Uh, but uh, and then we have 28 fields that are numeric and we don't know what they are. They are anonymized. Maybe principal components. We don't know. We'll, we'll need to imagine what they are. But in general, those those 28 fields represent every transaction, and we'll need to imagine that uh, they are things uh, relevant things. Let's go and see in the tool. So this is the data set. I. I 
didn't use the time filter as it doesn't make sense for, for this analysis. Here we have the, 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 the 28 virtual fields. We have an amount that we can see the amount is usually lower and sometimes higher. And then we have the class. And uh, in total, we have 8,648 8, transactions. And our, our uh, only, only 30 are fraudulent. So it's really, really unbalanced. And uh, well, the idea now is creating an anomaly detector and seeing if top anomalies match with the, with the uh, fraud class. To create that anomaly detector, I, I, I will need to avoid I, I cannot use the class uh, the class feature. So the class feature will be only for reference later to check if, if we did well. That's why I'm, I'm putting it here in, as an ID field. We have other param parameters. Well, we could we could here we can configure the the amount of anomalies to be displayed in the in the interface. Here we can configure the forest size for the isolation forest. So by by default there are 128 decision trees, and and well that's mostly that's mostly not not complex. And uh, let's create this anomaly detector. Again, the, 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 the interface will appear. And here, our, our idea is to check if, if maybe, so there will be 10 anomalies displayed. First thing to visualize, I'll check if, if uh, some of the top 10 anomalies corresponds to a, to a fraudulent transaction. That would be already a, a good sign. And then we'll go with a, with a, with a filtering and, 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 and further further actions. Takes a bit more time now. You'll see that the results, well, here it is. Um, again, on the left, we have the top 10 anomalous instances. We can see that the the, um, the percentage, so the anomaly scores are, are higher. So we have 70 something anomaly scores that is it's pretty high. And um, and well, we can inspect the different the top 10 instances. No? The, the, the first instance we can see 71.78% anomaly score, and the top field is uh, V2 that is very low, V1, V4. And if we check at the bottom our class that we that appears that in another color. Ooh, I went back. Sorry. It, 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 the class field appears in a in a different color as it is a, an ID field. It, it wasn't not, it, was, it was not taken. It was not used for the anomaly detector computation. But we can also inspect the results here to see uh, if our top ten anomalies are are fraudulent or not. Sorry, I go back. Just a little second. Okay, so if I go to the bottom, I can see my class field appears like a bit darker. And I, in, in, in this case, the top anomaly is not fraudulent. It's, uh, it, it has zero as a class. The second one as well. The third one is already fraudulent. So I, 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 ha I found like the third top anomaly is a, is a fraud transaction. And if I check what are the, the, the most anomalous fields, I can see that B12 has the most impact, then B17 and B4. That could be useful also for, as an analysis. And uh, well, let's go. Let's carry on with checking other instances. The, the the fourth instance is also an anomaly, and the fifth instance as well. If we check the fourth, we have also B12 and B17 as the top fields. And if we check the fifth, also B12 and B17 is here. We have B14 in that case. And uh, and well, we could check the, the rest of the of the top 10 anomalies. The six is not fraud, seven not fraud, eight not fraud, nine not fraud, and ten, the ten top ten anomalies also fraud. So we managed to get four fraud transactions in, in the top ten out of uh, 30, which is pretty good. Okay, let's do now a, a batch anomaly score. So what I'm going to do is uh, export the anomaly score of every instance in the original data set. I'm going to select the same data set. And uh, well, I can rename it. So 
So now it's, it's adding uh, into every transaction, it will add the anomaly score, the corresponding anomaly score it has. So our resulting data set will be exactly the same as the beginning with one more um, attribute, the, the score. And based on that, we'll be able to, to do some analysis. Here I can see the, the output data set in the big ML interface. And uh, here it is. So if I go down, there's a score after, after the class. And I can see that the histogram distribution of the score is, 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 a, is a kind of Gaussian. So we can see it on top of 50% of 0 0.5, it's, uh, it's residual even, even earlier. So, so it looks very good. And what we can do is filter and, and, and analyze the, 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 the transactions with a score over 50%. To filter, here's the menu, and it's it's quite simple. Just click on filter and select the field. I want scores greater than 0 0.5. And I can rename the data set. And uh, here we go. We'll do, go for the filter. And now we, we filtering by with this score, we have 173 instances. So we reduced, uh, we have very few instances compared to the eight, to, compared to the 80, we, to the 8,000 we had at the beginning. And uh, we have 27 fraudulent transactions into that, uh, that, that set. So the yeah, anomaly detector works really well and, and, and allowed to detect uh, 27 fraudulent transactions within uh, the top uh, anomaly scores. Let's uh, visualize this. How it looks and maybe find a different threshold. Um, so if I select the score here and I, and I color it by class, I can see that the, the orange ones are the fraudulent transactions. So I can see it's quite balanced. There are 27 here. And I could even, um, instead of filtering at 0 0.50, I could filter at uh, 0 0.55 based on that, uh, that experiment. It would be good to, to, to test with other data and, and be sure. But based on that, I could filter on, 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 on 0 0.55 and then um, I could deliver the analyst something even more accurate. So in that sense, let's do it again. And here I would be delivering the, the, the so the, 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 radio, the radio is even better, no? There's uh, 27 anomalous instances and, and, and with a total of 91. And based on that, based only on, on that uh, data set, it would be good to test with other uh, extractions of the, of the same data set. But for, well, for the demo, I, I, just, I just do this. But based on that, the numbers would be that uh, one, uh, we'd, we'd deliver um, a data set to the analyst where one in three uh, transactions would be fraudulent, which is very, very good. I think it's uh, it's too good uh, to be true in general. I think this this data set comes from Kaggle, and um, I suspect uh, the, the 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 V fields are uh, principal components, and probably they they left the the the, the objective field inside the components. That that could be a reason why it it, it works so well. I think the, the broad specialists that were this morning talking are probably love laughing right now because it's it's too good. However, it was a good it was good for the demo. And uh, in general, uh, this is the workflow we, we, we were using. And uh, uh, in general, anomaly detectors can be used as an, super, as an unsupervised alternative to classifiers when data sets are very unbalanced, extremely unbalanced. And uh, in the same way that, that, that we demoed with fraud transactions here, uh, it would be possible in other, in other environments, in other, uh, in other industries. So for example, we could use it in, in predictive maintenance, uh, predicting uh, in, in, in factories environments, predicting machines failures beforehand, uh, it's 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 also um, very very famous for, for for anomaly detectors and, and, and network inclusion could be also a very good example. But in any case, and any extremely unbalanced data set can be can be classified somehow with anomaly detectors. Obviously, it's unsupervised, and then you need to to evaluate somehow uh, manually. And, uh, and 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 this the success of this approach uh, is is uh, really uh, ch the, the the challenge here is really getting the the attributes that work the features that work. Okay, let's go for the for the third case. And uh, in this case, it's about discovering novel categories. In general, uh, also Tom also discussed it. In, in general, um, when when you put a model a model in production. 
classifier model in production, uh, over time data might change and, and, the, and the performance of the model is degraded. So that's what we call model degradation. And, and, and in general, it can be addressed by retraining the model with new data, right? Data that, that, we, that would be uh, more recent. And um, uh, some people, so some, some companies have this strategy when the data is available, but sometimes data is not available or maybe the computing uh, in terms of performance or computing uh, in terms of pricing, it's, it's too expensive. So, so uh, we, we would like, we like to measure model degradation. And uh, in general, um, also another problem for model degradation, what if the data you have is not labeled and you need to label it, so then it's expensive again. And, uh, and, 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 and what if uh, it, the possibility that uh, novel categories appear in the data, that's another, another topic. What if a new category has appeared in your classifier and you're not aware of it? So you, it's, it, it, you might need to, 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 to monitor this and, and, uh, and take care of, of these problems. So anomaly detectors can be used in general to, to measure uh, model performance, um, model degradation, sorry. And, uh, and, and in this case, I'm going to, to demo how to also measure uh, and, and, and spot novel categories. Uh, the, the workflow is as follows. So we would have an original data set, uh, the old data set, let's say, of which we would create a, a classification model that I'm not going to create in the demo. And then we'll, we'll create as well uh, an anomaly detector. And then um, when, when the new data comes, so after time, let's say after, after time in production, uh, every new instance would be um, scored in the, anom in, in the anomaly detector. And depending on the, on the anomaly score, it would be uh, predicted in the model or not. So only low anomaly scores would be predicted. We could filter out or reject um, high anomaly scores. As, and we, don't, we would only use similar data from the original one to, for the classification to that would that would uh, probably prevent us to to, to commit errors, and um, the data that we reject could be somehow stacked somewhere and 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 then um, reviewed by analysts in 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 a way that uh, there could be novel categories or uh, to see how what, what are the difference. Also, um, there could be an automatic process to after spotting the percentage of, of rejected uh, um, instances and when the percentage is over a threshold there could be an alert to, to retrain the model or something like that so uh, it could be an alert for for model degradation this is the data set we're going to use it's about uh, steel plates faults so it's about a, a, a factory that that is building steel plates and, and 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 it's about the faulty plates so some some plates in the factory would have uh, would be faulty would have errors or faults and and, and 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 in this data set every instant represents one of those faulty plates and the, the objective field represents the fault that the faulty, the faulty plate has and the idea here would be so we have um, different attributes of um, measures and luminosity from from each piece so the idea here would be that in the factory they are able to measure all those data automatically but they are not able to tell what is the fault automatically so with a process uh, a, a classifier this way we could predict based on the on the data they measured they measured on the on the pieces we could predict what kind of what fault type does that uh, steel plate have okay let's see it so i have a uh, uh, two data sets so I have my old data set here with the, with the old suffix where I have 1,088 steel plates and I can see in the objective that um, I have uh, the, those kinds of steel plates, uh, folds. So the, the folds are bumps, we have 300 and something, dirtiness, so some are, some are dirty, some have pasty, uh, other have stains, and, and then we have other folds as uh, unfortunately uh, the, the most the most uh, the most obvious of, of, of plates and the idea well, well we, we can create a model based on that and then I'll use a, a, I have a new data set with uh, 446 faulty plates and uh, in this case uh, there are new folds so there are uh, here there is case scratch where we have 120 case scratches and we have Z scratches with uh, with 54. And the idea here is check with uh, with an anomaly detector if, if the anomaly detector can spot uh, the case scratches and these scratches in the in, in this data set. And so that, that those would be the novel categories that then uh, in, in, in the real case uh, the analysts would need to 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 spot and 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 then to, to label data so 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 we could have more more trained data. 
Okay, so I'm going to, to configure an anomaly detector. Same as before, I cannot use the, in the real case, I won't have the, the, the objective fields. So the folds, I discard the fold fields in that case. I'm not going to show the interface now. We've already shown it a couple of times. So here it is, and what, what I'm going to do is a batch anomaly score. And uh, so I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm going to score all, all the instances, and I am going to do it in, in both data sets. So first on the, on the old data set to see how it looks in, in my old data, in my original data. And then I can do the same in the, in the new data set. If I go here and, and open the anomaly detector, Okay, so here's the data from my old data set with, a, with the score fields. Um, we can see the, the histogram, the distribution, and also, again, the high scores are residual in, the, in this data. So there are very few instances over 60% scores, so very, very few, and, uh, and um, uh, even over 50%, it's, it's very residual. Let's see how it looks in the new data. Okay, so here's the, the um, batch anomaly score over the new data set. So we have the score field here. And, and if we look at the histogram, it already looks very different. So the, the histogram distribution is very different. We can see that there are much more higher scores. There are more instances with uh, scores over 60%. There's a, a big peak in at 55%. And, uh, and even uh, there's a lot of instances on top of, of uh, of 50%. Uh, so it, it looks like uh, we already, this would already be a, a, an alert for, for model degradation. With this data, an anomaly, an anomaly detector would be telling me that there are much higher anomaly scores and that probably I would need to retrain my model. Um, and if we go to visualization to see how it, how it did result with uh, compared to new categories, um, and we could, so this, this color is about the known or not known categories to flag the new categories, and then I could use the fault and the score, and then I would have this. So I can see if I if I would filter uh, with a threshold 0, 050, I can see that the case scratches are well located. So the all the most of the case scratches have a high anomaly score. So this uh, mostly this anomaly detector would be useful to to locate the case scratches. However, the Z scratches would only have a handful, so three three instances. On top of 0, 050, or, or and, and and mostly have the same anomaly scores that other already known uh, um, faults. So in this case, I could say based on the on what we see here that uh, my anomaly detector would be useful to detect the, the case scratch novel category, but not so useful, and we might need to use another technique to to detect the Z scratch novel category. So in general, I, well, we showed how to that, that, that the anomaly detectors could measure um, model degradation, and that uh, uh, well, we could we could spot at least one of two uh, novel categories uh, thanks to the to this anomaly detector. Uh, 